Bobby Knight brought his grandson to his press conference for win number 899. What will he do if he gets win number 900 on Saturday? It's always an adventure. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you each and every week, breaking down some of the biggest college basketball games with some of the best analysts in the game. And this week, fortunate enough to have CSTV Steve Lapis with us, and he joins us from Washington, D.C., where Thursday calling a game at GW. And Steve, we know that Bobby Knight last year became the all-time winningest men's basketball coach, and Saturday a chance to join only two other people that have 900 college basketball wins. They're both women, Pat Summit and then former Texas women's coach Jody Conrad. He's kind of poo-pooed the situation, saying it doesn't really mean anything. Does that surprise you at all? Well, it doesn't surprise me that he would say it, but you know deep down the type of person that Coach Knight is. He's concerned about history, and he should be, and he's going to go down as one of the greatest coaches in history. So he's going to say what he should say, and that's the right thing to do, but I guarantee you it's going to be a big moment for him when he gets 900. And Steve, in order for him to get 900 on Saturday, he's going on the road, has to go to Stillwater and play at Oklahoma State. What will be the key for his team in this game? Poise. Stillwater's one tough place to play in. And that's one of the things about Oklahoma State. They like to turn you over. And the one thing that you tend to do on the road a little bit more is turn the ball over. They're already averaging 16 turnovers a game. And again, Oklahoma State, a great man-to-man -man defensive team, 10th in the nation in steals, averaging 11 steals a game. That is a lot. And what they don't want is Texas Tech doesn't want Oklahoma State to get the kind of turnovers that result in easy baskets. That's when the score starts to get a little crazy. So they got to make sure they keep that good tempo that Bobby Knight likes to play, keep it a half-court game, and make sure they don't throw it away. So if that's the case and poise is the importance, does Martin Zeno have to have a big game for the Red Raiders? Well, he's an upperclassman, so he's a guy who's got to have a good game. Now, he's a slasher, so he's the type of kid that is going to put the ball on the floor a lot, so that makes him a little bit more susceptible when it comes to having the ball stolen from him because you know Oklahoma State is a great help defense team, and they're going to be in position to try to make those steals. But Zeno shoots a ton of foul shots, not a good three-point shooter, but he gets to the foul and shot almost 100 free throws already this year. So Oklahoma State has to try and keep him in front of them and not let him get on their hip so that he gets to the foul line and get some easy baskets that way. He's an upperclassman, but this year, Steve, so much has been made about freshmen, especially uh, Eric Gordon at Indiana, Kevin Love at UCLA, O.J. Mayo at USC, the list goes on and on, Michael Beasley at Kansas State. But Oklahoma State has a guy, too, that uh, people should be watching out for. What's the deal with James Anderson? Wow, he can really play. Now, this is a kid who is primarily right now a three-point shooter. Almost half the shots he's taken this year are threes. He's shooting 42% from the three-point line. He's averaging about 16.5 points a game. But that's one of the things that makes Oklahoma State a tough team to figure out because when your best player is a freshman, that always can be tough. Now, neither one of these teams has a really good big man Marcus Dubb is probably the best one at Oklahoma State who can make a three. So this game is going to be dominated by perimeter players. Oklahoma State, Steve, perfect at home so far this season. The competition, though, at home hasn't been that great. It starts getting tougher now in Big 12 play. Do they stay perfect at home on Saturday? I think they stay perfect at home. I was at Stillwater one time. Thankfully, it was to call a game and not to play a game. <laughs> I think they're going to stay and go 9-0 and at home. Oh, well, you're not getting to Stillwater this weekend. You'll be in, uh, in Texas after going from D.C. But, sir, thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Thanks, Jason. Folks, for more on this game, which you can see on CBS Saturday afternoon at 1.30 or any other here this weekend, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. And also, be sure to check out more with Steve Lapis on CSTV's Crystal Ball beginning January 28th each and every Monday. For Steve Lapis, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.